Hi, everybody. How is everyone doing? Good? Yay. OK. Awesome. Um, so thanks for coming. I'm Alana. I'm going to be, I'm the director of marketing at Blue Fountain Media. I'm going to talk to you today about some innovative social media campaigns that you can do to take your brand beyond what you're probably already doing on Twitter and Facebook. So we're going to start with Instagram, which is sometimes derided as just a photo sharing app for hipsters. Uh, basically, it's a mobile app that you can upload photos to and apply vintage filters to the photo to give it sort of a unique appeal. Uh, you might be thinking, what's so great about Instagram? I don't really care about that picture of your brunch. I especially don't really care about that picture of your sister's cat. But Instagram is like any other network in that it's going to have its fair share of frivolous content posted by users. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have a large and engaged user base. So at last count, Instagram has 90 million monthly active users, 40 million photos uploaded per day, 8,500 likes per second, and 1,000 comments per second. So the point of that is that that's a pretty large and engaged audience that you could be capitalizing on. So how, as a brand, how can you be doing that? What's really important to note about Instagram is that because it's a mobile app and it's about sharing the here and now, what you're doing this second, um, what's going on outside, what's going on around you, any campaign that you run should be very timely. So the example that I use here is from New York Times. Um, they launched this hashtag over the, over the weekend during the uh, winter storm Nemo that we had. And they asked people to hashtag NYT storm and share their pictures of, uh, of uh, what was going on with the storm around the city. And then they were able to take that content and post it on their website. So they were able to generate some, some cool user-submitted user photos that they wouldn't have been able to get on their own just by sending out their own photographers. And that brings us to the next point, which is that Instagram is really great for crowdsourcing content. If you've ever tried to generate user-generated content before, you know that it can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, it's hard to get users to submit that stuff sometimes. Instagram lends itself really nicely to this. So the example that I've pulled here is from Tiffany. Uh, they're doing a campaign called True Love in Pictures, where they ask users to hashtag true love pictures and post images that represent true love to them. Obviously, Valentine's Day is coming up tomorrow, Alhan, not today. Um, and so they're capitalizing on this holiday. And of course, Valentine's Day is really significant to the Tiffany brand. You know, they're, it's a great time to propose. It's a great time to be thinking about an engagement ring. So they've used Instagram in a timely fashion to get awesome user submitted content that they've then um, repurposed for this microsite called True Love and Pictures. So it's tying back this holiday to their brand um, in a really effective way. And finally, Instagram is really useful for uh, combating what I like to call the brand blahs. So if you have a brand that is a little bit flat or it's a little bit hard for users to engage with or feel personally connected to, Instagram is a great way to show off who you really are. Um, it's effective for, using, for doing behind the scenes content. The first example is from Starbucks, which you might not think of as typically a blah brand or a flat brand, but there's a Starbucks on pretty much every corner of every city in this country. Uh, they all look the same. They're all exactly the same inside. They have the same, what some would consider surly customer service. So they're using Instagram and social media in general as a really great way to showcase a little bit more to the brand. So just looking at this page, you automatically get a warmer feeling about Starbucks. Um, you see a little bit about who they are, their history, what types of things they're doing, and what types of um, content their users are engaging with and submitting to them. And the second example is from General Electric, who you would normally say is not like a natural fit for Instagram. They're a B2B brand. You know, it's a this is, it's about machinery and production and things that are typically considered to be really boring. And the reason that I use this example is to show you that it doesn't have to be boring. So um, General Electric is highlighting ground, what they say, groundbreaking research and technology that they've been involved with since the days of Edison. So they're really telling a story through their Instagram and they're taking these larger than life photographs of jet engines and airplanes and windmills and tying that back to um, sort of everyday American life and how they're integrated with 
the world around us. So next up is Pinterest, which a colleague of mine referred to on Monday as the A Girl Can Dream social network. And the reason that uh, this colleague of mine said that is obviously because Pinterest has a, a reputation for being a female-centric social network. That's definitely true. And it skews towards a younger demographic, about 35 to 44. Um, and most of those women are, you know, in truth, posting pictures of inspirational wedding dresses or party planning ideas. But let's not forget that they do have approximately 25 million monthly unique visitors. That's more than Tumblr at this point. So it's a big audience. And knowing the demographics of it, a brand can use that uh, to their advantage. So the first example is from Kotex, who ran this campaign uh, very early on in the days of Pinterest about celebrating the individuality of women on this network. And they did that by picking 50 influential Pinterest users and taking what they actually have put on their pin boards and recreating it in real life and packaging it in a gift box and sending that real gift box, a real tangible product to those 50 women and then ask the women to, re to pin that to their pin boards, which they did in spades. You know, it got shared across multiple other networks as well. And the point to take away from that is that it's not necessarily about you and what you sell. It's about the story that you tell and the way you, you are able to connect with your users. So what Kotex did really effectively is get people to talk about a brand that, honestly, they don't normally talk about. The second example is from Jetsetter, who is doing this Pin Your Way to Paradise campaign, uh, where users go to Facebook to find a clue. They then go to the website to find the picture that's related to the clue and pin it to Pinterest. And the reason that I've highlighted this example is to, to remind you that of the idea that cross-promotion is key. So today we're talking about you know, Instagram and Pinterest networks that you, don't, you might not already be using, but it's important to still tie those back to Facebook and Twitter, and especially your website, because it's all about, at the end of the day, re-engaging with your website, and Jetsetter has done that really nicely with this campaign. And finally, I wanted to highlight this example from Arby's, because Arby's is obviously a fast food brand. They're not somebody who you might typically expect to be on Pinterest and be doing well, but they've created really excellent visual content. Uh, this is just an example of their Fresh Thoughts pin board, where they have funny you know, sayings and thoughts that they share. And again, the idea here is that your brand doesn't have to be sexy, quote unquote, to succeed on one of these visual networks. And then finally, I just want to talk about a few examples of people who are integrating referral programs really nicely into their social media campaigns. So the first is from Bonobos, a men's clothing line. They offer users the ability to you know, get a certain amount of credit to their next order if they share a link via Facebook or Twitter or via email. The same thing is being done by fab.com. Uh, they actually have three levels of refer, founding, VIP, and prime time. Um, and you can share this link. Again, it's specific to the user. It can be shared across different social networks um, or via email. And finally, Seamless, who uh, does, in general, an excellent job with their branding and their digital media across the board. If you've been on the subway at all recently, you've seen this branding shared. Um, and there's ads everywhere on the subway right now for this. But it's really important that the fact that they tie all that visual back together. So even here on their online referral program, you're seeing the same visuals. You're relating to the brand in that same way. And they have this interface where you can log in. You can see how many referrals you've sent, how many people have engaged with them. Um, and again, share those across your social networks. So allowing your users to refer people and become sort of brand ambassadors and, and virtual word of mouth by engaging with them where they are. So a few things to take from this presentation. The first is to think about visual from the very beginning. So these are. The things that I've talked about today all really focus on the visual. That's really important for a brand on any social network, but especially as we see things trending more in this direction, photo sharing, video sharing. Having strong branded visuals is incredibly important. 
The second point is to remember that your brand is interesting too. I think a lot of people shy away from, from things like Instagram and Pinterest because they feel like, oh, that's not really us. We aren't, we're, we're not going to be able to engage that audience. And the point is that it's not necessarily about, again, what you sell. It's about the story that you are able to tell to your users. And then finally, innovating by integrating. So continuing to make sure that all of your social media is, um, is integrated across the board and that you are, as I showed with the referrals, you are um, tying all of that back together and allowing users to engage with you there as well. So thank you, everyone.